Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Woo! What's up, people? My name's Timmy Joe. I'm making videos about these things, computers. Huh? Get your, get, go to school, learn about them. Go on the internet. It's a series of tubes. The internet is a series of tubes. Yeah. We're back here today. How you doing? What's up? What's what's for lunch today? Hey? We're back. And, uh, yeah, the video that I did the other day uh, with the Duron and all that got me thinking about a video I've been meaning to do for a long time with this little baby. Huh? A CPU cooler from 18 years ago. That's crazy. CPU cooler. And, uh, yeah, look at it. Check it out. It's the uh, Vantech Aeroflow. This is a socket A. So this little guy here, huh? Athlon, huh? Thunderbird, stuff like that. It's a processor with a die exposed. That's how old it is. From, you know, 2000s era-ish. And this CPU cooler is meant to go on this. See? There's a little slug there. A little... And it would work perfectly. See? Huh? It's just small enough. And I got thinking... How can I make this go on a motherboard for a modern platform, and how well would it perform? Especially considering, you know, it's got a copper slug in it, and, you know, it's not heat pipes, and it's got a tip magnetic fan, which we'll learn about in just a second. Uh, Vantech, this would have been like a, you know, overclocker's CPU cooler back in the day, because you could, you could overclock on those things, and this would have been something you'd want to use to get those uh, things going. You do the little pencil trick. Beaky, beaky, beaky. And then you can overclock. So what I got here, well, Biostar sent over a motherboard for review. Figured I'd throw this on a 2700X and some Dominator memory. And we could do uh, a little comparison of old cooler from 16, 18 years ago. And the Wraith Max Super RGB Max Crazy AMD Stock Cooler, which is what it's called. Ra Wraith RGB Max Super Cool Deluxe. Anyway, so what are we working with today? Three now, it's got 2933 memory, and that's all like, the speed I can get, even though it's 3200 because it's Biostar motherboard. I'm not sure about it yet. And it's got the stock cooler on it, and right now it's running some, some tests. So let's look through some stuff. Boof. We've got socket A. That's what this is, socket A. That's what that looks like. Uh, that's important stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's a tip magnetic driving fan. That's what makes this thing special. And, basically, uh, it's a fan technology invented by Yen Sun or YS Tech, which is quite literally written on the label of fan. So, there you go. And, uh, basically, the TMD moves the motor out of the hub and uh, puts it on the around the edges. Basically, there's magnets around the impeller, and then there's some coils around this. And we'll open it up later, and we'll check it out. But the hub motor is not in the middle. It's a different kind of fan. And according to this Wikipedia article, they are known to be large amount louder than standard hub motor fans. So we'll that, check that out as well. It's also not PWM. It's just DC voltage, you know, if you see it here. So we're not going to get to do any, you know, cool whatever, but it should still register the RPM and show some stuff. So moving down the list, this is uh, Vantech's website now, and that's all they have for CPU coolers. Two VGA coolers. And if you go to their main product page, they do dongles now. They're, they left the CPU cool business. Let's do some dongles. SATA stuff and, you know, HDMI to Thunderbolt, stuff like that. And I found some reviews of this from around the time. Uh, this one's from overclockers.net. And uh, basically it says it's got, uh, what, conclusion. Vantex Airflow is very competitive socket A cooling solution. Especially note, acceptable fan noise overall. Nice balance between noise and performance. So even though these are supposed to be loud, Apparently it wasn't so loud to their testing. And then I found another review here. Um, the only thing I care about on this one is it actually shows the uh, stats of it. So it's a 0.3 amp, 12 volt, 5600 RPM, and it moves 35 CFM. So, yeah, there you go. That's what the specs are on it. And then I even found this old YouTube video of uh, 3D Game Man who's uh, virtually identical except for reviewing it. And that's the original state you see here. If we make this full screen, uh, there's a, the three prongs that used to be in this thing. I put a newer style uh, latching mechanism on it so it'll work with this motherboard. So it won't work stock like that. It, he also has the P4 version of it on this table. But yeah, it's meant for this. We're going to make it work on this. And it's going to be kind of weird and crazy fun. 
as it always is on this channel. So I've been running Ida64 for, what, 13 minutes now? So we've got some data with the, uh, the Wraith and what it does, and uh, apparently Ida64 is not picking up the sensors on this motherboard, so we got to do it with a uh, hardware monitor. And we see here that we're at, on the FPU stress test, 84 degrees, and everything's set to auto, so it should be you know using XFR 2.0 to get the best clocks and stuff based on the cooling solution and the power provided. And we see here it's hovering between 3.4 and, uh, sorry, 3.74 and 3.76 uh, gigahertz. So it's not even hitting 3.8 gigahertz. Uh, you know, the, the stock fan, the stock fan isn't that great uh, for hardcore loads. It's 2700X, even at auto, would benefit from any aftermarket CPU cooler. This one's supposed to be good. It's good enough. In my experience, it's not the greatest. And we see uh, 84 degrees. It spiked up to 86 at one point. So, yeah, we've got some good data for this. So we'll go ahead and stop it. And uh, last thing I want to run is just, you know, the, the CPU is good and hot right now. We'll let it cool down for just a split second. And then we'll run Cinebench so we can swap coolers and see just how bad the tip magnetic fan could really be. So the fans ramp down on this. It should be fast enough or uh, cool down enough. We'll just make sure to, it's not like there's going to be any heat soak or anything. Uh, what are we at idle? 45 degrees, 43, 42, 41. So it's doing a good job of dropping the CPU temperature down really quick. We're at just under 40 degrees on the package, and I just want to see if it'll go any lower. Apparently at one point it was 33, 38. There we go, 38. That should be good enough to get the best Cinebench result possible. We'll run multi-core test. Bam. Now we're cooking with gas. We hear the fan ramp back up. And 75 degrees on the package. And we're hitting, what, almost 3.9 gigahertz, 3.85. So about 100 better than the FPU stress test. Uh, well, it's uh, uh, 77 degrees. And we'll see a score of, what, so 1738. So that's some pretty good data for us to do some comparisons. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to the Vantech, and we'll see just how bad 18-year-old uh, CPU cooler can be on the most modern 8-core platform for consumers there is. Except for, don't count Threadripper. Well, how's she looking? Been about, what, seven minutes? I think that's long enough. We see here that the speed is now clocked down to 35. 500 megahertz 3.5 gigahertz uh so we're definitely doing some throttling i wish we could see the temperature stuff in ida 64 it's pretty good at telling you when it's throttling but the xfr is doing a good job at going hey the cooling solution isn't good on this so it's reducing the clock speed and the voltage is at one uh, under 1 1.2 so it's doing a good job you know at going hey i've got a crap cooling solution on here but Nothing's failed, which is very, very cool. So let's see here, 86 degrees, it got up to 90, but it never went any higher than that. So, I mean, I was expecting it to fail and it didn't, but the modern platform is so smart that it doesn't allow it to fail because, you know, it, obviously we're not gonna be able to get a huge overclock with this cooler, but the cooling solution actually works. And if I feel in here, the aluminum's pretty damn warm and uh, actually what's interesting is so much air is being pushed out through this thing that I feel like the VRM heat sinks are actually, well, they're not working as hard because they're working at a lower frequency, but they're not as hot as they were with this cooler. That is for sure. So yeah, uh, gets up to 90, stays under it. And then the, let's see where the megahertz are at now. 3.5 gigahertz. So, you know, it goes, what, to 150 megahertz lower, but you could run the system at stock with this cooler on it which is pretty cool i would say so let's go ahead and shut this down we'll let it cool down real quickly for a second it's going to do it quickly because that fan is just blowing let's see here package temperature 74 73 70 69 once it gets down to the 40 range we'll run cinebench and we'll see just how bad the score is uh comparatively 
But since it's a short burst, I would actually imagine that the Cinebench score isn't going to be that bad. 39, there we go. So we'll run Cinebench and just see how bad it is. Doo, doo, doo. So we're running 8 cores, 16 threads, stock, mind you, on auto settings, with a CPU cooler from 18 years ago, and it's completing a Cinebench run just like normal. So I'm pretty impressed with this thing, except for it is damn, it's not... The loudest fan I've ever heard, but it's definitely audible. I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing it. It gets the same Cinebench score as this thing. So in short bursts, you could use the CPU cooler. That's amazing. So that's, that's pretty damn cool. So the last thing I want to do, uh, let's see here, peak temperature. Yeah, I mean, it's not great, but it's not terrible. It gets the same stock Cinebench score as the stock cooler. That is amazing in itself. So we'll go ahead and shut that down. I'll turn my Elgato off, go back to this picture for the fun of it, and we're shut down. I want to take this fan apart real quick and we'll see what it looks like because I'm interested. I think it's going to be a pain in the butt to take off here. There we go. Because I think it's like pinch locked into the plastic frame, but pull this out go okay so we see that copper slug in there and I actually had to modify if you look in there here I'll load this up Boop. there we go so I've taken the fan off and you'll see how I modified this was I put a little heat sink in there and I cut grooves in it in order to allow it to pinch at the right uh, height to get the CPU cooler on the right way. So I modded this pretty cool. I forgot that I did that. That's pretty neat. So here's the fan. Whoops, I don't wanna lose those screws. And yeah, it's pinched into here. So let's see if I can get it off. Oh, yeah, that should, let's see if I can get it off. Oh, I'm, I'm breaking it, I can tell. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. So that's what the fan looks like inside. That's pretty interesting. See the four coils? And then there'd be magnets surrounding. Yeah, I can feel this. This fan is weighted because it's got mag magnets all around the end of it. So, yeah, that's what she looks like inside. One, two, three, four coils, and she spins, and there's no hub motor on the bottom. So, all in all, this was a pretty fun little experiment proving that this old ass, like, look, the, the, the copper and the aluminum is, like, pretty small in there. It was able to just work like regular. I was able to get the same stock Cinebench score, you know, once things have cooled down, as this thing did. And this thing's got huge heat pipes running through it, all kinds of surface area compared to the surface area on this. This is like machined aluminum. This is like plates of aluminum that have been all stacked together onto that cooler. So much bigger fan, obviously, in a standard fan. And of course, the RGB's got to add for a little bit of something, something. So I'm out watching Jimmy join Scrum Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, I certainly did. I think this was really fun to check out a tip magnetic fan that, uh, ooh, that's pretty cool, that uh, can cool a Ryzen 2700X about as good as the stock cooler for maybe about one minute if that then it gets it's still it'll still cool it 3.55 gigahertz not bad i'll see you guys later if you have any cool hardware like this i'd love to check it out on the channel email me me at tvjoe.com as well as i have a patreon and that could i could use some love on the patreon front that'll help me get cool stuff like this back on the channel you know do some you know old retro stuff reviews and uh able to buy some cool video cards and stuff like that but any help will help that's for sure but i just want to thank everyone all the support over 62,000 subscribers like i can't i can't complain that's for sure so i'll see you guys in another video and if you can find a airflow aeroflow i should say by vantech out there i encourage you go ahead and grab one it's a pretty cool little cpu cooler you just got to do a little bit of modding to get it to work on a normal platform